Yes, yes, this is Mr. Controversy, and this is the infamous Three Point Conversion Station. Keep it locked. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And I'm your host, Mr. Controversy. Did you miss me? It's another great Saturday morning. Ready to get on, man. Um, Ready to talk about these sports. Still a lot going on, which, but at the same time, there's not a lot going on. (laughs) <laughs> but that's alright man we, we gonna uh, keep y'all entertained For these next Two hours And I do mean two hours And I hope everybody is safe and healthy man Hope everybody is doing good uh, We appreciate your patience And We here It's, it's been hot as I don't know what Out here in Atlanta, if y'all in Atlanta, man, y'all been um, been burning up like hot. But hey, I mean, the good thing is ain't nowhere to go, so we sitting in the house cooling off. But um, welcome, 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 man. I'm not doing this by myself. Of course, I got my person behind the glass. My man G, what up, G? Yo. And then we got my road dog, my partner in crime, D Intellectual. What up, D? What up, what up, what up? How you doing, man? man I'm good. Can't complain. Like you said, hot. Yeah. It's about, it's it's about hot. hot. Mm-hmm. Nothing but 90s plus over the last 10, 15 days. And we got some more to go. But it's supposed to rain the rest of the, the next seven days. So good. Not that that's going to cool nothing down because as soon as it stops raining, right. it's going to be yeah. 116. Especially if we had that rain where it rains for like <laughs> two minutes, two yeah. minutes, and then <laughs> yeah. back up. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, man. So we have a great show lined up for you. We are talking about all the trouble in Washington, man. It, it's this. This is crazy. Like, <laughs> I, I know you're praying for a season to start. You know, in a sense, you would normally think when you go through things like this, go through a lot of stuff like this, that you don't want the season to start because, you know, that you're going to get a lot of people, um, a lot of media asking questions. But the rate, it, the rate they're going, <laughs> they want the season to start because everything <laughs> keeps happening. Oh, God. They just want something to happen. Man, but we're going to get into that. Also, everybody having fun in the bubble right now, man. Like That's what they said. Mugs chugging <laughs> beers and stuff, and <laughs> man, I just, next thing you know, we gonna see them. They're gonna have a uh, jump rope contest, <laughs> like. <laughs> but um, we're gonna talk about the Eastern Conference, man. You know, the season's supposed to start on the thirtieth, so it's coming up. So now it's time to preview what what's what's gonna happen. What what team do we think gonna make it to the finals? What team is gonna be that surprise team and knock off somebody? Got a lot going on with that. Also, we have special guests coming on. Warren Moon is going to be on the show. He's coming on to talk about what's going on in the NFL with Dak Prescott, the pandemic, Cam, Patrick Mahomes. So um, that's going to be great. Y'all want to tune in for that. And then we got Battlegrounds, man. We we So we did, we did a Battlegrounds through our through the week on Wednesday, a live battleground streamed and everything, but we're going to play it again because a lot of people probably didn't get to see it. Everybody that's not on Facebook or YouTube, but mm-hmm. check out YouTube. So we're going to play it on the radio. We still want you to decide, still want you to vote. And and then we have um, What If. Of course, this is the segment where we get to sit down with the athlete of our choice and ask them five questions that we want to ask off the record. So we can ask them anything we want. We don't have to be politically correct. You know, this is in that coffee shop or whatever. 
So um, then we got stop it. What's on our mind? Quick hits. So we um, definitely appreciate you for tuning in. You can let your family or friends know they can listen to the show live locally on 1100 AM WWE The Real. Also, we're live on Facebook Live, I think. The Three Point Conversion Facebook page. If we all, what up, what up, what up? I ain't checked mine, so we should be. Um, also, we're on iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. And then um, just look for 1100 WWE. WWE. I said it three times, right? Mm, all no, right. you didn't at first. Okay. Yeah. Right. The W three times. Three and, W's. And just thinking of the Three Point Conversion and W three times. And then also. He, he um, figured that out for y'all somehow. I don't mean to hey. Because people are gonna say WWW. You said it too. We all say it. Let me think of the wrestling. <laughs> and then um, and then of course um you can check it out as a podcast later on on the three point conversion station and on iHeartRadio. Just look for the three point conversion radio station on iHeartRadio. Yes, we on iHeartRadio, our own station. Doing a little bit, you know. Trying to do a little sign, something. Sign, something. Sign, let's sign, but sign. anyway. It is time for these quick hits. Let's get it. Shout out to Sharon Beats for the sick beats. On the beat. <laughs> the NFL intends to change the injured reserve rules to create a COVID-19 classification. Players who test positive will be placed on the COVID-19 list for three weeks creating a roster spot that will be filled with a player who is negative for the virus. The players on the COVID-19 list will be paid their normal salaries. That was big for the, for some of the players who are still going to play. You don't think so? What about the player that's going to be on there for three weeks and he really don't have no money or had nothing to do, so you're just going to call him and replace I thought he said him. he's going to – no, he's going to be play, paid, though. That's what it says. List would be paid their normal salaries. The players on the, the players on the COVID-19 list, but the dude that's sliding in for him for the three weeks, what happens to the rest of his life? Are you talking about after he don't make it? <laughs> yeah. That's what normally happens, though. <laughs> But At it don't be three that- weeks. It'd be kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, this could happen or whatever. Because that, like, that guy might not get a chance to be productive. Like, if it's a wide receiver and then you sign in a wide receiver off the street for three weeks, but he doesn't play. He doesn't even play special teams. Like it's, And then three no, weeks, no. that guy's negative. Okay, we got to cut somebody. We gotta, you know, and you're going to cut him. him. We gonna cu- Last hire, first hire. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Because if this dude <laughs> is playing right, hey. That's, the, that's how it was like anyway. Just because he got signed, it don't at the mean last minute. It he doesn't might not get, still might not get to play. Yeah, he got three weeks. I mean, true, but that's how it would be if they somebody would get hurt. You know how it was. Oh, we need a roster spot. Come on in. This and, this is like a ten day contract. Yeah, for the NFL. So <laughs> what, what would they rather want? Not get signed or get that. Get that one for, game check. Yeah, that one game check. I mean, you definitely want the one. That's game what I'm check. saying. But it's, it's working out. Even, it actually, go get three game checks. Yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. But I mean, either or, it's even, it ain't, it's not like he was he he had the house. So, um, people that's out here listening, I want y'all to pay attention to this. Every week we come on with quick hits, it's gonna be something different with the NFL, NBA, MLB, <laughs> <laughs> with the COVID thing. I promise you, every week is gonna be a new rule. Or a new setting, or a new something. It's just, it's just. That's just, that's just the reality of where right. we're at. Now. Yeah, <laughs> man. Moving on, WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert says that league has no plans to insist that Atlanta Dream co-owner Kelly Loeffler sell her stake in the team. Loeffler, Republican U.S. Senator running for re-election in Georgia, objected to the league's um, innovative. Or initiatives, I'm sorry, to honor the Black Lives Matter movement, asking the league commissioners to scrap plans for players to wear warm up jerseys with Black Lives Matter and say her name and instead put an American flag on all uniforms and apparel. Boy, I wish this is a cable show. Um, so I have so much to say about that. One of the first things that I want to say about that is all she continues to say is there is no place for politics and sports. Hum. What what is she? Right, a senator. And what does she do? She owns the Atlanta Dream, and she's been on Fox News. She's been on all these channels speaking towards all of this. 
However, there's no place for politics in sports. Yeah, everybody been, you know, people been on that. Like she been, she be saying some dumb stuff. She been very, on this very for a dumb, and, and she's very um against it. Yeah, I, I she's just, very against. I just hate it. that when we had Renee Montgomery. I hate we didn't ask her about that because it had just start coming out, and I, I hate that we didn't ask about that. But I, I mean, they, they spoke on it. Everybody spoke on it, and it, and and it's um. It's a messed up situation that the commissioner is in, right? Because that's not a, that's it, uh, unfortunately it's not a reason to get rid of a person, a owner, right? Yeah, not like, because like, they. Yeah, you can't, you know, they beliefs, right? Like right. You, you can't do that, right? They like, have to do something, right? Um, but everybody wanted to, and she probably wanted to too, but she knows she don't have no legal basis for it. You right. know what I mean? Right. So no, it's 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 messed up, man. Moving on, veteran outfielder. Yasiel Pui said Friday that he has tested positive for COVID-19. Earlier this week, Pui had agreed to a deal with the Braves. However, the deal had been contingent on Pui testing negative, so that agreement is now off and he remains a free agent. The way it came out was bogus because they was just like, he signed and then... <laughs> they don't want him. They're like, nah, we good, fam. We good, like, fam. You got that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you got that thing. We don't want you to... So it should be when he's... Hopefully, when he's free, when he's um, quarantined, he should get signed. And if, it might be that. If I mean, not, he has a legal lawsuit based on discrimination. Yeah, but the <laughs> only thing is the fact that if that's true, that the deal had been contingent on him pos- on testing negative. That's, you can't, that's, that's. But if that's in the contract. But that's, that that's, the, that's shit, that's not part of being in the yeah, contract. That's right. discrimination too. Yeah, no, you're right. That's bogus, man. Like, man, we know. When I said that's what I said is yeah, bogus. we know he can bat or whatever. Like, give him his th- first off, baseball season's not even gonna start by the time he he gonna be tested, um, right. negative, or whatever yeah. it is, maybe. Right. And how many false negatives, uh, false positives, and false negatives have there been out here? No, you right. Moving on. Houston Texans wide receiver Kenny Stills will no longer face a felony charge for attending a protest in Louisville. Still joined a bunch of protesters. If y'all had been catching up, they marched to um, they they was in Kentucky and marched to the home of Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron on Tuesday to demand action against police officers who shot and killed Breonna Taylor in the march. So it was like eighty seven things, eighty seven others or eighty seven combined My with son, him. Uh, Yandy Smith. Um, to, what's her name? Tariq, Tariq, Tamika Mallory, Mallory. It was um, it was a lot. It was a whole yeah, it was a lot, lot of big, and, um, big people. But big, it, you know what I'm it got dropped. So um, which is dope. Um, now it's still you know they still gonna be charged for Mr. Demeanors or it's under review. So, but that was cool that you know the other attorney came in and was like, "Nah, we good." I mean, most people knew that it wasn't no. You know what yeah, I mean? And right. Especially when they got the publicist publicizing. What they being charged for mm-hmm. and what's really happening, and beyond that, which is the biggest fact, Breonna Taylor killers are still free. Yeah, they're free. <laughs> Nobody's saying nothing, man. Um, it'd be dope if NBA, if somebody once once they get um, interviewed and they pull up Rasheed Wallace, like I think Breonna Taylor murder should be <laughs> arrested, and keep saying that after every. That'd be dope. So, um, and last but not least, huh? Didn't somebody do that? What? There was like during some uh, conference call, the player answered every question with, uh, I don't know. Arrest the killers of Breonna Taylor. Yeah, he included that in his, in every answer. Oh, he included every Uh answer. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did. I remember that. I I can't remember who it was. Yeah. And then last but not least, Tiger Woods barely keeps his streak alive of making the cut. At the Memorial Tournament in Dublin, Ohio, in 18 appearances, Woods had never missed the cut in this tournament. He shot a four over, 76 in the second round, putting him three over going into the third round. He's now 12 shots back of Ryan Palmer and Tony Fanau, both tied at nine under. Yeah, he had a bad day yesterday because he was five shots back and he was one under to go four over in one day is like... Um, what'd you do last night, Tiger? <laughs> um, and, you know, we always ended with, um, you know, some things that have happened, especially deaths. Uh, rest in peace to John Lewis. 
died at the battle with cancer. And also, um, Irving Cordy, Tyndale Vivian, died at the age of 95 from natural causes. Yeah, um, John Lewis was a, a, a trooper, a G. Yeah. You know, man, that was like... Because the rumors came up, and then, you know, it had been confirmed last night. So, um, condolences to their families and all. And that ends quick hits. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Hey, folks, Handsome Josh is here to reveal some big news to all the AM 1100 listeners. I have an app. That's right, you can now check out all your favorite programs right here on The Real with The Real 1100 app. Whether it's sports, entertainment, or lifestyle, The Real 1100 definitely has you covered. So why don't you just tell me how much it's going to cost me? And here's the best part. It's available in your Google Play or Apple App Store, and it's free to download. Actually, you can count me in on this one. So download The Real 1100 app today and stay in tune with The Real. I'm Maurice Jones Drew of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the NFL Network, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion. The Three Point Conversion. Get ready. From the oven to your ears, it's now time for the hot topic. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. I'm your host, Mr. Controversy, with my co-host, D Intellectual. What up, what up, what up? And this next segment is the hot topic. Hot. Hot. All right. Like fire. And, fire. boys, it's, it's hot. Man, you talking about heat. This team is under some heat. Like. What do, you, what do we call them? The tripping team. Nah, I don't know. The Snyders. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that, well, actually, that would be a terrible idea. <laughs> like like a week ago, that might have been a good idea. I ain't going to lie. Now? Hey, it's now, like, dude. Hey, nah, nah, hey, nah, 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 to be real, nah. shoot, we, we, we might accept, what was the one they called before the Redskins? Before the, they called the, the, Snyder. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> so, man, it, You've been under a rock. You was locked up. You just got out. You've been locked up for a month or something like that. You just got out because you got the COVID or whatever. So let me tell you what's been happening the last two weeks. Talk um, a, let's talk about it. Well, really, part of it has been the last <laughs> about 15 years. But um, so it really came out maybe two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, where um, it hit the fan where Washington had been criticized and challenged to change their name, the Redskins change their name. So the um what was I gonna say? So PepsiCo, FedEx, and Nike, well, first of all, a lot of people came out, you know, the investors came out. So then FedEx made a statement and then Nike was like, you know what, I am we're not even gonna talk. We're taking y'all off <laughs> just off the um off our store, you can't nothing. even buy a jersey. You can't buy you can't buy anything. Anything, nothing. So then Pepsi Code they made a little statement. All right, so Washington came out and said, "All right, we're, we're going to change. We're going to change that. We're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. We're going to come up with a change." Now Thursday it comes out. Fifteen women came out and stated that they were sexually harassed between 2006 and 2019 while working for the organization. Not by owner Daniel Snyder, though, but people of the organization, and and but they believe that he knew about it. And this is this um, post about a Washington post that came out. Even John Madden, even Madden, Madden said, removed the them. Redskins, yeah, and just said we're gonna have a generic Washington team. So they're gonna have player. Remember how player. Michael Jordan used to yeah, have player? Go <laughs> play, so, player. Running back, yeah. RB, QB. Now nah, they probably going to play a the, name. The helmets yeah. won't have anything. Have no, I'm just saying the helmets going to have just player. Like, yeah. You know they put player for everything. It's, on it's that. probably not going to have nothing. Sports. It's probably just going to be they color. Yeah. yeah, but you know EA the Sports always are they going to be they going to be what is it called? What they should be called? 
the timber. What was that team called? Remember they had a special. You get that code, and you get the um, special teams, and they had like all the um, the team, the the staff member. It would be a team called like, whatever the staff uh-huh. member was called. The t- I forgot what their name was, but this is gonna be crazy, man. Um, what's going on, man? What what like what to make of all of this? Dan Snyder. Mm. He told y'all how, how I mean, was it four years ago? Mm-hmm. He said that he would never. I'm never going to change the name. He said yep. he put it in all caps. In all caps, right? They put it in all caps too. Um, that's the beginning. Um, but also, um, even when he got to speaking on changing the name, what's the first thing he said? Our sponsors. Like before he said fans, that's the league, yeah. anything. What did he say? Sponsors. Sponsors. What well, that's that's what I told you. When Jerry when Jerry was like, No, my my players can kneel. And then next thing you know, the sponsors hit him up, then he changed his tune. That's how that's how they all I think. Man. I don't rock with Jerry too tough. That's why he ain't on here no more. But I'm saying that's how they talk. Yeah. I mean that's like, that's it's, all it's owners. About their back, you know what I'm saying? But like I, it's, it's crazy because, like, it's you know we be talking about you know a lot of things happened this week even with you know with the Nick Cannon thing right like he chose to be you know even with his whatever he said or whatever the case may be, and money isn't a thing even though he's not as much of a, a billionaire as Dan Snyder, Jerry Jones, or whatever. But it's crazy how even when you got this certain amount of money. That it still be about money. Yeah, it's it's all, it's all it is, and <laughs> this is I mean? this is what this is about because he said he wasn't going to do it. They said now he's doing it, but now with everything that's co- that came out with the women, it's like, and you know how it is, especially these days. <laughs> hey, we see the snowball. We about to we about to keep piling it up to make it even bigger and bigger. So now this comes out. Like I wonder if it was like, all right, we're gonna wait for the. Right time to come. Oh, they just saw it. Like, you know what? Let's go ahead and say something. Let's kill it. And that's, I mean, but that's how it is. And that's what they're dealing with. Now, the the, the thing is, is there any way of salvaging their reputation? Like, after everything. It's crazy. It is, right? And and this is kind of why this whole movement that we've been talking about, you know, for the last few months, you know, the black movement, um... If this was a a black man that owned this team, <laughs> could you even imagine what would be going on right now? Like this mm-hmm. is the privilege that he has, right? Like he doesn't have to do this or don't have to come out and say this or whatever the case may be, and he can get past it and whatever. Yeah, he's gonna get past it. It's I mean, gonna be okay. It's gonna be, you know what I mean? He like it done got to the point where you we know how hard the NFL goes on. They they got a. A whole Senate to do things on players and all of this. Mm -hmm. Do you know that they are referring to the lawyers that he hired with anything that's being brought up about this? Like, that's that's what happens with situations like this. You know what I mean? But if it was a player, right, where anything was going on, it would be a big thing. The NFL is speaking this. The NFL is speaking that. They actually are referring the questions to his high-powered lawyers that he's got. And, and, I, and I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And what I mean by this, he's gotten some lawyers to look into it and go deep into it. Mm. And he's taken his hands off and allowed them to do whatever they want. But how the NFL going to say, we don't have too much to say. We're going to direct questions to them. Come on, man. Y'all always got something to say. Yeah, they made a statement. Um, but I still think that, um, I don't know. You, you say it, it can, and I understand from that point. But I'm trying to figure out how can they salvage their reputation because his reputation or the rest whatever because winning at this point if they win that division and go to the playoffs all is going to be forgotten I'm I, telling you I don't think so I think if first of all that's not happening but I <laughs> right, think if, if, the, if it does happen <laughs> I think it would be worse because now we're part of me you know how it goes the more the more questions are going to come mm-hmm. it's never going away they gonna direct questions to their lawyers. <laughs> I mean, he can do that, but I'm just saying for the t- I'm talking about for the team. The team don't have any lawyers. The the players they gonna get it. 
the coach is going to get it? Like, that's going to be the question. But I think, I, think, I, think I think with that, a responsible media shouldn't be beating up on the players about this. Because this, this is nothing. No, they won't beat up the players. But they're going to ask about gonna it. Ask. But, right, but with this, everything with this is nothing with no players. This is all front office. No, right. How many, how, how many times, like, how much do you think players are really in the front office or in the offices upstairs? You but, know what I mean? But that's how it happens because, and I'm going to let you go, G, because the players, because the the Daniel Snyders or anybody else is not taking I get that, but questions. I feel like that's irresponsible of the media. If I got in front of Dwayne Haskins or or Adrian Peterson or or um, who did they dress the giraffe? Ohio State. Uh, Chase Young. Chase Young. I'm not going to ask them that. But what? But ask the thing them is, what? you can't. You can't ask. I mean, Chase Young wasn't here last year, well, I, so he don't know. Yeah. But maybe you, you could ask. You can Dwayne ask Haskins, Haskins but he, he might be limited because he's only well, been there a year. But he's Peterson. But he's with DC. Be, but I'm just saying, not even just about the women. I'm just saying, as far as the question, a question you're gonna get is, "Hey, all right, so now what you playing with the Washington? You know, whatever. Washington. Just yeah. Say Washington. How, how do you feel with everything that's going on? Does this is this a lot of pressure? Playing. I'm here to play football. Or well, such and such, I'm just saying, but that's what they're going to get. I know, but again, again, and 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 I know it's going to happen, right? But again, that's that's me saying what a responsible media person should do is I, when you talking to it, when you talking to uh, a player. I don't know. I we, hear we, you. It's they shouldn't be pounded on it, th- th- but that's a legitimate question to ask. How do you feel about you're playing under this? Do you you know what I'm saying? That's I got a contract. Right. <laughs> like, what am I no, going to no, do? I get it, but I'm just saying that's that's what they're going to have to deal It's a legitimate question, but that's what they're going to have to deal with. So, but not only that, just the team itself. Man, okay, yes, you said you're changing the, the team's name, which you're probably going, you know, y'all going through that. It hadn't happened yet. So, until it happens, you're going to hear about that. Now, with this, like, we haven't seen... In sports, I wish some. I wish Marshawn Lynch had a, was was a part of um, the Red. Redskins right now, so somebody can ask him. And he can say, "I'm here to." I, hey, but look, I'm just here so I don't we, get fired. Have we seen a team <laughs> go through this in any sport like this? Like it hit them. We saw the Clippers what they dealt with. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw teams cheat. We saw Patriots cheat. But we, but, but even had, with the Clippers, it was more locker room. It was it was it was the players, right? But that's what I'm saying. But. It was what you mean? It was the players? It was the players. How he how he treated them? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what right. I mean? Like they that really was more di- a direct. But I'm just saying. But it was still it was still the own. I'm just saying. But yeah. this team's going through. We hadn't seen a team get hit like this. <laughs> like you know, the uppercut first, the 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 um shot to the ribs. Or the kidneys and I then think, the uppercut. I, I think for me as a media person, I don't want to talk to Adrian. I want to talk to Daniel Snyder. But you're not. That's the point. You know what I'm saying? You could talk to Jay Gruden because he, he ain't I, there. I, He's that's not who, there anymore, that, so you go find him. That's who I'm a grill to. You, you know what I mean? Like, he was, he was, you know what I mean? He ain't going to say anything because he was one of the ones they called out. I, I'm, I'm grilling Ron Rivera then. Ron Riviera. Ron what, Rivera. But that's, not, that's not, but that's not fair to him. But what's, you, what's you, he, he's ho, not going to – What I get that. I get that. But you just said, no, how I'm do go, you feel right. playing for this team? I'm going by – No, right. I'm just going by what you just said. I'm saying if you're saying you're not going to go to the players, then it wouldn't be fair to Rivera because he's just – that's what I'm saying. But, no, but what some of your questions you, was to the players is how do you oh, feel yeah, he's playing for this brand? Like, he's going like, to get them. Are you reconsidering being the coach for them? Well – Speaking of that, I'm glad you brought that up because Rivera came out and already answered that and said, no, he said, I'm proud. I'm glad I'm still here. Mm-hmm. I'm proud to be here, and I want to change the narrative. Yeah, because he want a job. Yeah, so but that's <laughs> right. But that's what that's what the players going to have to do. They're going to have to come up with a way to answer it. But, again, the bogus part of it is, is not necessarily – you can't get on the media because, I mean, that's who they got. It's more – like like we said, the owners and high up because now they're, they're not coming out to a- answer any questions. Right, that's who we need to talk to. You, you know, know what I mean? And, and it may and and this argument and what we're talking about made me go make it make is making me think on the other side, which is some of the questions that we go into. Right? Um, should he sell? Mm, I mean, that's we don't know. He probably won't. Oh, I mean, we know he's not. But do you think he should sell? Um. No, I mean, 
He probably won't. I mean, it's it's hard we, to we say. Stop he, saying what. Don't, stop saying what he'll do. We know he's not gonna sell. I mean, what that, do you think? Do you think he should sell? If I was the owner, I wouldn't. I mean, that's not that's not what I'm saying. If you was the owner, you're Daniel Snyder. So no, you're not gonna sell. No. Do, do do you? It, I don't. Not being no owner as a media personality, do you think he should sell? No. <clears throat> do you think he should? No, but there's there's one thing he should do, is just like fade into the background. Yeah, just chill. Don't don't don't, get, say don't be seen on TV that much. I mean, that, that, go, so it's a couple things you're gonna go do. To, if you don't sell, yeah, because that's what y'all saying. Don't sell. I think he should because it 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 it, it wipes everything right. Even if even if he don't sell completely, become a minority minority no, and when, on, on wait. It. When you asking a uh, question, where are you are you basing it off of everything that's gonna happen over the next five you, to ten years? Right, but I'm saying, are you basing it off of for the team's perspective, like yeah. standpoint? Oh, yeah. of course, of course, yeah. But I'm, the team and the oh, NFL and everything saying, that's going on. I with think it. he should like yeah, but for the team, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah work because, for that, because yeah. right, it's go, it's going. Like you saying, fading in the background, fading in the background. You a billionaire. You like so. Like, let me ask you this then mm-hmm. before we go. Does this make them rush and get a name change? You know, <laughs> like it's already being rushed. They're trying to do this all in two months before two months this. Before no, this. No, before this. So right. So now it's uh, so. But what's the name? The Washington Angels. Hey, so, like what? Are you, hey, what so, so, what so, you gonna do now? Should he get it from his? Should he ask his um, grandson or somebody? <laughs> no. He should, like y'all, both of y'all just said, he should fade back, fade to black. Remember Jay's song? Fade to black and back out. And if, if he need to hire somebody to do all of this, that's probably what right. he should do. But it's too, it's too late to fade right now because you've put everything, you've done everything it's that not he, he hasn't said anything. No, well, listen, he ain't even said nothing since the name change. So you're proving my point. It's too late to fade back because he already messed up. That's what I'm saying. It seems like he already has though, <laughs> but it's not working. That's what I'm saying. He can't him fading back won't work but because he, he even with this thing he still hasn't said nothing. No, he came out and made a statement. He made a statement yesterday, but he can't he can't fade back because you already caused too much. You see what I'm saying? Like if he fades back, well, I want to say he can't fade back. If he fade back. It won't change anything. Here, here's the thing for me, right? If I'm a billionaire, this is a headache. Somebody's taking the fall. Listen, this is a headache that I don't even want to deal with no more. So somebody's taking the fall. Give me three billion for this team. I holler. I'm good. Like I don't need this. I don't need this. This is a. This is. This is not a one month headache. This is a. Years headache, but you have to think about how owners think. Yeah, think about that bad, and you can say anything you want. Is it gonna buy? Lot? He been now. He hadn't dealt with this scrutiny, but he's always dealt with scrutiny since he ain't no much became money. You know how much money you finna lose from fifteen women? <laughs> and with the money he has, right? We know. know it's not going. We know it's not going. But he 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 finna lose. Is that your phone? Is he that finna part lose. Of B? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is. He finna lose a lot of money. Fifteen. I don't know what that is. Fifteen man. women. Right. That's a, 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 from a, that's that's billions, not billions, but that's that's like a hundred million. That's nothing to him. I I know. That's what I'm saying. But, like, so that's why I think like, he won't sell it because he looking in the future. He's still gonna make money of the team regardless. And, how, when it and, and, and this what this what ticks me off. Right? He vows a culture change. Dude, you knew about this. You knew about this, but you vowing a culture change because of what the media got a hold of it. All right, man. We're gonna take a quick break. This this is. No, I hate we ain't had the time we supposed to have. Throw the team away. Yeah, throw the whole gotta, team away. We got to throw it away. Throw the whole team no, away. No, I wouldn't say that. What you mean, hold the team away? I say throw the team away. The whole team. Just disband the team and uh, uh, do a free agent pool and something. All right, <laughs> since we cover the Washington Redskins, we're definitely not doing that. <laughs> no, I mean, not like <laughs> that. You know, I'm just, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... <laughs> Just him. He not. Nah. He. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, like, come on, man. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, but. All right. We're going to take a quick break. 
We'll be right back. Have a sports injury? Need to see an orthopedic doctor? Ortho Atlanta is one of Metro Atlanta's largest orthopedic and sports medicine practices, providing orthopedic and sports medicine care for the whole family. With 37 physicians and 14 offices, the practice provides the highest level of care for injury of muscles, joints, bones, and spine. Ortho Atlanta offers convenient access to a full range of musculoskeletal surgeons and specialists. Ortho Atlanta also offers on-site physical therapy, pain management care, MRI imaging, and workers' compensation care. The Ortho Atlanta Surgery Centers in Austell and Fayetteville provide cost-effective, same-day surgical procedures in an accredited outpatient center. Hip, knee, shoulder, back pain? Ortho Atlanta has you covered with specialists in all areas. Same-day appointments, orthopedic care for the whole family. Ortho Atlanta, Atlanta's choice for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Learn more at www.orthoatlanta.com. What's up? This is Vince Carter. You're listening to the Three Point Conversion. Check it out. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. All right, so NBA, we're what? What's today? The 19th? 18th. 18th, so we're what, 12 days away from the start of the season or restart of the season. And the players are getting acclimated with the bubble and <laughs> they're having fun. It looks <laughs> like doing anything to, you know. They what, say the food has gotten better. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember, they they were on de- them two days. They couldn't go anywhere. So now they're able to, you know, that bubble was open to them. It is not like they're in a hotel room for the 40 days. They're just in this bubble. You know something that I was uh, mad about? You know, I was on Twitter, IG, and all of this, social media. And um, <clears throat> people were like, the NBA players are complaining about their food, and there's people out here that can't eat. Like, come on, man. Like, and, and what I mean by it is, like, that that's a no, no-brainer, right? Like, we get that, right? But, like, I mean, millionaires, they, they, they used to what they used to. Right. And, you know what I mean? Like, if I went there and... I'm nowhere near no millionaire, right? If I went there and the food wasn't good, you know what I would say? The food wasn't good. It's not good. It's not, you know what I mean? Well, you know, that's a lot of people say, people only say that to people that are wealthy or rich because when this pandemic happened, we all was complaining. Oh. So, yeah. That's, like, stop it. Like, yeah. J.R. Smith, not even, not, not just J.R. Smith. If I went to a hotel and they had some craft Mac that I can warm up in the microwave, that's going to be an issue for me. Right, right. Yeah, that's, I mean, honest, <laughs> I felt them. I understood it. So it's, I got it. Uh, we're going to focus on the Eastern Conference right now. And mm-hmm. this is, we all look at this as the, the weak conference, of course. But... <laughs> The Western Conference. This <laughs> Western Conference. <laughs> but what what team? What team? So it's it's the um, the eight teams: Milwaukee Bucks, Toronto Raptors, Celtics, Miami Heat, Indiana Pacers, Philadelphia 76ers, the injured Nets, the Orlando <laughs> Magic, and the Washington Wizards. <laughs> they all. Those are the only teams. That are in the bubble, right? Because the, yeah. it's only really one team that could really right. get into the ninth. So, because there's nine teams in the East, yeah. right? Right, and it's so, only eight, so only one can move up. Which out of those teams? So we're looking probably at the bottom half, of course. You think 
can make an improbable run. You mean once the playoffs get to start, yeah. Indiana. Or, or just even get in, like say if Washington get in somehow or whatever. Washington don't have Bradley Bill. Yeah, the Nets don't have. <laughs> but Washington don't have Bradley Bill, so they don't, they they can't, they're not going to be able to do it. That would be the only team that really can knock somebody off because it's nine teams but, for them. Eight, right, right, but you got to – but, I mean, they're what, five games, six games back from the Nets, right? It's only eight games. So, listen, Washington, they, only ha- they don't have Bradley Beal, right? He's not playing. Of course, John Wall's not playing. The Brooklyn Nets have a whole – Nobody. That they're no, not familiar with. Nobody. They really need to win, what, two games? Right. But can they do that? I don't know. They might can go 0-8. So, but <laughs> either or, so let's say, so the bottom half, do you think it's Philly? Do you think Orlando? Or you say Indiana, right? Yeah, I think, and, and or I mean, it's throughout the playoffs, right? I think Indiana could make one of them probable because, runs. Because um, Oladipo said he's um, – He's just about sure that he's going to play. Even without Oladipo. You see what they're right. doing? Yeah. But, if they, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. If they get Oladipo. I think one thing that can hurt them is Lamb, not, Lamb injuring his ACL. Yeah, that was big. I think that was huge, right? Because he, he owned that second the second uh, unit. Like he, you know what I mean? But I really think that it, Nate McMillan is a, is a, I don't know if I can say H-E double hockey stick, but he's a heck of a coach, right? Like he, yeah. I can mm-hmm. I said it. Yeah, hell of a coach. Yeah, okay. just cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's a hell of a coach, right? Right. He know how to move things around and and get things like in this situation. So I think that's one of the teams that has a a chance to not just knock somebody off, but like go somewhere, like do something special. You know what I mean? And I think this type of <clears throat> thing for them, them in Miami. You know what I mean? I like. I think this bubble type thing. It's perfect for teams like them, right? Because they already a close team. They seem like the type of team that go to lunch together, that go bowling or go do this or go do that. Philly seems like, eh, uh, Ben Simmons go do whatever with mm-hmm. this person and B go do what he do. Tobias mm-hmm. Harris go do what he do. Not to mention, he live in Orlando. So, you know right. what I mean? Like, uh, Houston seems like Russ and James Harden go do this. Like, you know, teams do what they do. But it seems like those two teams are like, Close, you know what I mean. Well, um, G, what what team was that? Was that Orlando? Who? What team was doing a beard chug? Uh, I know it was JJ Redick and Myers Leonard. Those are the videos that I saw. Yeah, I saw them so too. Was, too. They, that was New they, Orleans. Ain't, they ain't even on the same team. That was thing. New Orleans. Okay, but um, Leonard uh, played for what? The Blazers? Who? Miami. Miami. Yeah, Miami. Yeah, yeah, so, Miami. Right. Yeah. So I don't know now. I will say a team, I think, with Orlando, if they got young players, they, they that's a scary team in a sense just because everybody's coming back. I, I'm pretty sure. They all been playing with each other for a while. But, again, all of this, records kind of go, if, especially if they're in the playoff, they maintain it, records kind of go out the window. So Everything go out the window because one of the biggest things that, it hasn't been talked about. I think I saw it mentioned somewhere. There is no home home team advantage. There is no nothing. Right. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I think with Orlando Magic playing, I think they've all been there the longest besides Marcus Fultz. Like, well, they've been there for two years. I know in the East. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I, don't feel, I just don't feel like they had a talent overall. I don't know. The big man is nice. Yeah, he nice as heck. <laughs> like, he nice. Like for any done tried to <laughs> you know, say heck is that hell. <laughs> he done he done put a little three point in his in his in his game and he like he nice. Right? And Aaron Gordon been playing well as a But what goes also. into that is they still don't know what position he really is. So you know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's I think it's it's still building for them. And if you put them in a seven game series with Milwaukee, it's probably gonna be Yeah, they they're probably see that's that's the thing. That's you know why I, mean? I think it has to come. But if Orlando moves to seven that that's the thing they can't. They whoever's can't, they, eighth, they, they, I don't see Milwaukee losing right now because they have and the even best who, who, who's second? Um, Toronto's second. Toronto might go to the okay, finals. So all right, so let's move on. <laughs> Philadelphia, we, you mentioned them. Mm-hmm. They just came out and said they're going to move Ben Simmons to power forward. Mm-hmm. They're going to put Shake Milton, who who was balling at he point guard. A, he got a J. Yeah. So with this happening. 
It's a short amount of time. It's basketball. Can Philly make a run? I think they can. And I actually think it's awesome for them, right? And what I mean by it is um, Ben Simmons don't have to be – has to be the point guard to run the offense – or to bring the ball up, or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? You still can have a point guard in the game, and your, your offense, because they say it's been looking marvelous. Right. Him and MB are are being more cohesive than they've ever been. Well, this is probably the best thing, mm-hmm. because it's it's like kind of being on the road, mm-hmm. but still being to where, all right, you really can't go anywhere. So they, they have to get along. They have to... to gain trust just being there for all these days so you might see in practice and everything i I know other players are hanging with other players but i think once the season start you won't see players kicking it with their friends on other teams Mm -hmm. as much so having them in this bubble they made this move i still think ben's gonna handle the rock but now you're just inserting another shooter you're putting him at another position to where now your power forward might have to guard. It's a it's a um, matchup problem. Definitely. And if the problem, the thing is, if Embiid goes out and dominate, if he dominates, now there's no distractions. If he goes out and dominates, they can beat Boston just because who will stop him? If they dominate, they can beat probably any anybody. Team right. That's what I'm saying. So who in the NBA? Who who and and if the, if the, if it stay like this, now they might move up. That's the thing. It might move up. Boston might. Move down. We don't know. But I'm just saying, if it stayed like this, who would stop? Who would be able to guard him in Boston? Then you still got Al Horford there in Philly. Who can guard him in Boston? This team um, is talented, man. Like, this might be the team that... Let's say nobody. But here's the biggest thing. Is NBA going to do that? We don't... It, it might. <laughs> he might this time because no distractions. But you giving him the benefit of the doubt when we've given him the benefit of the doubt. But the benefit... I don't know, but it's I don't different. know if he it's, deserves it's different, the benefit. But it's I, different I get that, but I don't know if he deserved the benefit but of the doubt. But it's different. I hear you, but it's different. That's what I'm saying. It's different circumstances. It's no distractions. You know what I'm saying? None. His lady not there. It's, she not that when. Because two weeks after it starts, they can bring anybody they want. He probably though. ain't going to bring her. Probably, huh? I, you, you, I was looking at look, your face. That's you not can't his, even get it out. Saying, that's you not his wife. But he don't. No, he gonna bring. Yeah, they, you can't they, even get it they out. Gonna need something. But. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and what I'm saying is, this is this is the reality of it. It shouldn't take this for you to be this dominant player. No, you're right. Like you're dominant already, right? Like you're great. And if your focus is basketball, you should go out there and do it all the time, right? So why it take you to go to Orlando in a bubble during the middle of a pandemic for you to be this great great center that we know that you can be? But My man, do that already, man. No, I mean you're right, but I think this is going to be the blessing of the of the um, pandemic and the bubble. You're going to see a lot of players that might refocus now. That we were like, man, what are you doing is going to change. Like, and then next year Car- when they playing at home, they just going to go back to their Carmelo. Thing. I don't know. It might not because it <laughs> might put them in this in this um, mindset. Carmelo lost that weight. We had never seen Carmelo always been pudgy. That's because he had to go to small forward. But still, I mean, but I'm just saying, like at the time, small forward was he he, he used that for being for the small but forward if, to put him in the but boat. But my point is, if, I, I know, I know, because they probably he probably the coaches probably would have well, said, it was a pandemic right, too, so he probably, yeah, a lot it of people, gave him a chance. A lot of people lost yeah, weight in the pandemic. Lost weight, <laughs> gained, lost, weight. <laughs> gained focus. Like I want to play ball. Who do you think coming out the East? I think um, I think it's still Milwaukee. I'm going with an upset, Toronto. I think it's Milwaukee. I think people are really, really, really overlooking Toronto. I just think it's hard to beat a team with the best player. That's why. That's why I think if Philly, maybe because they got a player like that, they got two good players. But it's hard to beat a team with with what's going on. It's hard to beat a team with the best. Toronto forty six and eighteen. It hasn't had their starting lineup for like five games. Yeah, but and Nick Nurse is a. Tactician, tactician, tactician. I don't, mm. I, I don't think, I don't think that. I think that matters, but right now, all that stuff that happened in the regular <laughs> season, 
go he out won the a window. championship last year, dog. Listen to what I'm saying. Everything that happened in the regular season, I'm saying this year is what? going out the window. I, he won a championship last year, dog. That's last year, and you were playing on that go out the window. You know I'm saying that go out the window. It has nothing to do with this year. He a championship coach, Mike Bo- 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 What, what does what's Bud? Now? But you can't but, say anything but, today. But knows what does that have to do but with? Di- I'm saying what does that have to do with this year in the pandemic? All I'm saying is it's open season right now. So Toronto, I think, can win it. I'm just saying, but anything that happened. But in the regular you giving season, it to Milwaukee based off what they did in the regular season? No, I'm not. I said because they have the, the best, best player. player. I'm, that's all I'm saying. That's why I say that it's hard to beat a team with the best player right now unless you got good players on your players. I'm close to being equal, like the Clippers and the LA Lakers. You know what I'm saying? But that's Milwaukee why I, was the best team last year. Wasn't yeah. So, all right, man, we're gonna take a quick break. We can talk about this all day too. We'll man. be right back. Or just six. The staff here at Real 1100 AM would like to encourage you to social distance yourselves. While you may feel disconnected, you can always connect with us at real1100.com. So remain at a safe distance. Call, text, or email a friend and tell them to join you at real1100.com. What's up? This is Gilbert Arenas, Agent Zero of the Enemies, rocking with the Three Point Conversion Radio. Y'all tune in. Holla at your boy. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. It is what if? D. The player that you would want to talk to ask five questions. Who is the player and what are your five questions, sir? So, um, keep me in hometown, shot town, you feel me? The Bulls. A six time champion. A multiple time all star, top 50 players, Hall of Fame. Scotty Pippen. You know? Um, my first question would be. When did he feel that MJ was coming back? Remember him pointing at his shoe? Mm-hmm. Pointing, telling him to come back? Like, when did you know that he was coming back? When did you have a feeling or an inkling that he he had that itch that he wanted to scratch? Um, second question I'll ask him. When you dunked on Ewan and pushed him down and stood over him, like, what was your thoughts? What was your feelings? Like, what were you at that point? You know what I mean? Because nobody thought you had that in you, right? Right. Like what, what? What was you feeling? Um, third question: <laughs> Did you really have a migraine, or were you just a little scared of the bad boy? <laughs> like, <laughs> what was going on with that? Like, I have migraines, and I know when you got a migraine. I know in the last dance, Mike said you're gonna play through anything. You ever had a migraine? Controversial. No. You had one before, G. You can't do nothing. You got to sit in a room, in a dark room, and sit there and twiddle your thumbs. And you can't even twiddle them right because your brain ain't working the right way. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, next question would be, what was your expectations when you went to the Blazers? Or did you think you were going to be there missing piece? Were you going to be the number one player? And you wind up being third, fourth player on the team, on the totem pole, you know, whatever. Um, my last question is, did you get braids recently because of the thing with your wife and future? Because it's not too many 50-year-olds that have braids. Sure, probably because he can have hair. I wish I could grow braids right now. <laughs> As I go when you grow. I mean, you always got to have hair, but, like, what made you get cornrows, my dude? Like, cornrows? Uh, those are my five questions. All right. For Scotty Pippen. Okay, so my questions will be to Jerry Rice. I would sit down and talk to Jerry Rice. You know, Jerry Rice comes off as, you know, just being real as a square to most people because he's just, you know, he's kind of lighting up since he's retired, but you know how he was as a player. So that's why I would want to talk talk to him. So my first question would be, (laughs) hiccups. 
uh, you once said that you didn't really enjoy yourself or have fun while playing in the NFL. And then Dion came to the team. Remember, Dion was on the team, and you didn't really get along with him because you felt that he didn't take the game seriously. After you saying that you didn't have fun when you played, and then, of course, looking at that situation with Dion, how y'all didn't get along, how you felt, how the way he looked at the game, the fact that you see that he still was arguably the greatest cornerback ever in the NFL, do you wish you were more loose during your career so you could have enjoyed it? I just thought that was interesting when he said he never enjoyed playing. I'm just like, that's horrible. Wow. Yeah. That's horrible. All right. I actually did he enjoy uh, that Popeye's chicken commercial. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming from an HBCU school, why is I never? Why does I never get brought up? You being the greatest player of all time, why don't we hear about you coming from an HBCU school? Is it more that they don't want you to bring that up, or is it more that you don't want to talk about that? Yeah, good point. I don't know. I know he talked about it on his um, 30 for 30 or whatever, but I that just... I feel, like, I feel like it's it's him, and, what I mean, and the reason I say that is because most players that come from HBCU, you know what they say? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't know yeah. why, but um all right. My next question. You and Montana won three Super Bowls together, but you and Young have more TDs together. Who would you have rather play with your entire career? Like for real, for Rodney. You might have answered this on, but for real, who was it? You know, Montana was always getting hurt, but he was putting that ball right there, but you and Young had that chemistry. Your last game for the 49ers, you had seven catches for 76 yards. But T.O. broke not only your single game record, but the NFL record. That same game had 20 catches for 283 yards and a touchdown. Do you get mad? Are you mad at more mad at him, Jeff Garcia, or Mariucci? How was your relationship with T.O. since then? Because you had to be salty. But you had seven catches, but I know you had to be salty. He had 20. And then last question, you once had the high top S-curl. And then you had the half ball, half braids. What do you think was your worst hairstyle? And did your wife and or children ever say anything about your braids when you had them? It's funny you said about the Braves, and then I was, I was laughing like, uh, but those are my five questions. All right, G. All right, the uh, athlete that I would want to talk to is uh, Reggie Miller. Um, I grew up watching a lot of uh, Knicks and Pacers games in the playoffs. Uh, I watched every single one. I've watched the thirty for thirty a uh, dozen times. Um, it probably could have been longer than an hour. It's only an hour long. I feel like there's a lot of things they could have gone into. Um, the Reggie Miller's always, uh, he's been one of my favorite players. Uh, the first question I would ask him, uh, everyone knows his older sister, Cheryl Miller is probably the greatest women's player of all time. And she, she played at USC and he went to UCLA. So I would ask him, would going to UCLA, was that more about sticking it to Cheryl or <laughs> forging your own identity uh, separate from hers. Um, in the 87 draft, uh, the Pacers picked him, but a lot of fans wanted them to pick Steve Alford, who played at Indiana University. They won a national championship. Um, so they wanted him to, they wanted the Pacers to pick him. So they picked Reggie Miller, and so the fans didn't like him at first, but I would ask him, uh, so some people listening probably don't even know who Steve Alford is. So <laughs> I will ask him, how soon did you know you were better than Steve Alford? Or they know him as the coach of, um, who did Steve Alford coach? Iowa? He coached Iowa and then UCLA. They know him more as the coach of. Yeah. <laughs> they know that he was one of the best college basketball players of the country <laughs> at the time. Uh, he played on that 84 Olympic team with Jordan as a freshman, as, as a freshman in Indiana. So. Uh, but I was asking me how, how did he, when did he know he was better than Alford and, you know, he didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, 
I would ask him if he would trade anybody from those 93 to 95 Pacers teams for a player from the Knicks that he feels like would make his team better. Would he have done that for to any of the any of his teammates? Um, I would also ask him uh, his last season in the NBA was the uh, Malice at the Palace. A lot of people thought the Pacers could have won a championship that year with Jermaine O'Neal and Ron Artest and Steven Jackson. I would ask him, does he blame Ron Artest for costing him a championship? Hmm. And has that conversation ever been had? And the last question I'll ask him is, where does he rank himself all time as far as shooting guards go? A lot of people will will be quick to say, you know, Jordan, Kobe, Wade. And then after that, are Drexler better than him? Is George Gervin better than him? Is Manu Ginobili better than him? So where does he rank himself as far as shooting guards? Is Manu Ginobili better than him? Somebody, somebody might say it. Somebody might say it. They tripping if they say that. But go ahead. Wow. But that was those are good questions. Mm-hmm. Good questions, good questions by question. everyone. <clears throat> so this is what we're gonna do. We're going to take um, a break. We're going to go into Battlegrounds. We're going to do Stop It after we have Battlegrounds. And then we're going to bring in Warren Moon. Then we're going to do Stop It after the Warren Moon segment. All right. So we're not going to do it like we normally do around this time. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break. Um. Real quick, is there anybody you would um you agree with? You like his questions? Quickly, you good? Yeah, them qu- I, well, I probably ask Reggie is him and his sister the same person? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you ever um, seen them together? Yeah, they look alike. I said you ever seen them together? Oh, uh, yeah, I have. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All right, man. Um, who did you have? Scotty. Scotty. You got a question you asked him? Yeah, probably about the Kukoc situation when that shot. And did he, like, did you and Kukoc – did y'all relationship change after that? Was you more mad at Cool Coach? Like even at that point, I know you was mad at Phil, but were you mad at Cool Coach? Like I would just ask him, you know. But all right, man, we're gonna take a quick break. He won. He should get over it for real. <laughs> he hit the shot. <laughs> That's what it's. He hit the now shot. If he got a miss, I'd be like, hey, you should have. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. What's happening? It's your man Big T doing big things. Y'all know what it is. ATL Hawks official DJ and Rap City forever. You're checking out the Three Point Conversion Radio. You dig? You're tuned into WWE Hakeville. AM 1100. The opinions expressed during the sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. Big ups to our Sports Lounge crew for keeping the airways blazing each and every Saturday. But I want to send another special shout out to our team of writers at The Three Point Conversion. You can visit us at thepointconversion.com. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. How about the gram? How about iHeart? How about Spreaker Radio? How about wherever you need it, baby? We got you covered. Happy Saturday, sports fans. It's your boy, Sherm, a.k.a. the Lord of the Beats. And you are currently inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge with my man's Mr. Controversy. The intellectual, and of course, my dog G behind the boards. Cheers to the freaking weekend!
All right. We are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And so we're about to play this Battlegrounds we did Wednesday. I don't know um, if G can. Hopefully he can play this music anyway <laughs> while it goes with it. But um, we're going to go ahead and start it. All right. Go ahead, G. What up, what up, what up? It is your man, Mr. Controversy. Back again, but this is a different element tonight. Uh, Man, we have Battlegrounds Championship. That's what we're doing tonight. We're doing a Battleground Championship as they showing the Bears and Packers on on um, screen but either or what's going on fellas again i'm mr controversy did you miss me and i got um the two men that made it to the championship we got mr danny thompson and we and danny first of all danny's been a um, runner up maybe what three times i think two to three times uh he's been in the championship like i said three times He's lost. Me personally, I feel like he got a, a raw deal in two of those, but hey, that's just how it goes. But he's back, man. What's going on, Danny? You know, trying to make, you know, try not try to be the Buffalo Bills. You know, that's the whole. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I can't be the Bills in this, in this any longer. Right. And then I got my guy, last year's Battlegrounds champion, Mr. Ray J. Lynn from the Sports Reporter Without Pay. What's going on, bro? What's up, man? He beat me to it. I was sure about to call him the Buffalo Bills when you said he'd been second place. He beat me to it. But it's all good. I'm here, man. What's good? I'm good, man. So, of course, this is different because we don't have the music. You know, we we blame uh, the platform we own. We can't play the music. I wish we could, you know, because, you know, that music... I know it gets y'all going every time y'all hear that music. You know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, first of all, how's y'all day been? I'll let Ray go first. Uh, different, man. You know I live down in North Carolina right now. I'm, I'm up here in Detroit, man. Came up to Michigan, take care of some business, dealing with some family stuff. But all is well, man. I'm not complaining at all. That's what's up. That's what's up. Danny, what's up with you? Man, you know, just getting adjusted being back in North Carolina. Um being away for 10 years and finally settling in back in Charlotte. So it's, you know, it's between that and, you know, just moving. It, it finally finds some normalcy. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So we're going to get to it. Um, it's been a long journey. This has been great. Ba- it's been great battles throughout. I mean, Ray, Ray always talked about how last year it was clean, you know nothing. He didn't have, he wasn't challenged. I think think Darrell challenged him some, but to the for the most part, you know it was like whatever. But this year, he had challenges. The questions were harder. Danny went through his. Um, just some great battles, man. And we finally get to the end. Remember, it's a cash money prize for the championship. So um, that's on the line. And then, of course, probably more than anything in it. I, I'm pretty sure they both agree to this. Right now, it's just all about uh, pride right now. Who knows sports? So we're going to do like we always do. We're going to, um, I want you to pick a number between 1 and 62. And I'm going to let Danny pick first. 7. All right. Ray? 8. All right, Ray got it. It was 12. I don't know if y'all remember when Jordan wore 12, but anyway, so, um, hey, um, Ray, it's on you, man. You going first? You going to let Danny go first? I'm always going last. Okay. And um, we're going to do it like always. You you got up to um, 30 seconds to come up with your answer if, if you're going first, and then you get – and um minute and 30 seconds now i will say this but i'm gonna go over the rules just in case somebody's watching they don't know how it goes 
So we have three rounds. I was going to do the five rounds. We're like, no, we're going to do the three rounds. We're not going to do it like that. We're going to keep it like it's been. Um, Both contestants, they will get to answer the questions. There's going to be one question per round. So if Danny, since Danny's going first, I'm going to ask a question twice. And then Danny gets up to 30 seconds to answer or to come up with his answer. After he gets his answer or he's ready within the 30 seconds, then he'll have a minute and 30 seconds to argue his answer. Ray comes right after him. He gets no time because he'll be waiting. And he goes, he has a, a minute and 30 seconds. Then the next round, it flip-flops and it flip-flops. I need your votes, ladies and gentlemen. I need your votes, okay? So um, how we doing it is, one, the fan, they're one vote. So whoever wins throughout, who's ever watching throughout the whole week, that's one vote. It's going to be five votes. We got four other voters, important voters, okay? So we're doing it like that. So it's not just, not saying it's always like if they like you or not, but they don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's not just that. So you got to win four more votes. So, um, all right, man. Let, let's go ahead and get this going, all right? Uh, first of all, let me go to the comments real quick. Uh, Mike Mike said, he, let's get it. <laughs> Mike ready. So, uh, all right, Mike, we about to start this. Please share. All right, let's go. So I'm going to read it twice. The first question is name an NBA coach since 2000 who hasn't won an NBA championship who would have helped or better yet get the the early to mid 90s Orlando Magic to a championship victory, not named Jeff Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, Jerry Sloan, or Brad Stevens. Max, one more time. Name an NBA coach since 2000 who hasn't won an NBA championship who would have helped the early mid to, ni- mid to 90s Orlando Magic team with Shaq and Penny and all of them win a championship, not named Jeff Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, Jerry Sloan or Brad Stevens? Danny, you have 30 seconds to come up with your answer. Yo, why do I have the Battlegrounds music in my head as I'm thinking about this? (laughs) (laughs) All right, you have 10 seconds. All right, Danny, let's go now. When you look at head coaches and from 2000 on to the current present day NBA, one coach that never got a championship but has the principles to get that Orlando Magic team the championship would be Tom Thibodeau. I know Raphael kind of hurts you being a Bulls fan, but listen to this. Tom Thibodeau is one of the most defensive minded head coaches that we've seen in a long time. He knows how to deal with star players. On top of that, he preaches defense. One of the things the 90s Magic sometimes had a little bit of few defensive lapses, lapses worse was on the defensive side of the basketball. So when you get a guy who can always who knows how to use star players and also defend, when you have Shaquille O'Neal, you have Penny Hardaway, who or two, two of the better defenders in the league, you have Horace Grant, a guy who is a locker room guy, with the X's nose of Tom Thibodeau. And just remember, he doesn't have to use Penny Hardaway like he did Derrick Rose. He has Shaquille O'Neal. When you have multiple weapons with a coach who can defend, with a shot blocker. This is young Shaq. This is skinny Shaq. This is dive on the floor wearing the Orlando Magic white Shaq. Okay. A completely different type of player. He has three point shooters and Dennis Scott. He could also use it and maximize as well, too. Remember, Thibodeau was one of, one of the main reasons why the Celtics were successful in the early part of the 2000s. At the same time, the reason why the Magic would be great is because Tom Thibodeau's defensive efforts would get this team around together and also shore up the little deficiencies they had when it came to play teams like the Bulls and other teams they lost in the playoffs. So I'm taking Tom Thibodeau for that one. Hmm. All right. Ray, it's on you. Let's go now. I'm a firm believer that obviously in the NBA, like star power matters more than anything. Um, you got to have stars. So when you look at me, I try to think about a coach who was successful and didn't have star power. So when I look at that Atlanta Hawks team with a lineup of Horford, Millsap, Kyle Korver, Jeff Teague, and these guys won 60 games, 
Coach Boonholz is that guy, man. Then he came over and he has Milwaukee looking like legit contenders. So if you're looking at Coach Boonholz, and he talked about young Shaq. We're looking at young in his prime Giannis. Um, and we see what Boonholz is doing with him. So now you put him back in the 90s with a guy like Shaq and you add Penny Hardaway to that mix. Um, Coach Boonholz has got... Got Milwaukee playing both sides of the ball. They're a top five offensive team, top five defensive team. Like you said about Thibodeau with Orlando, that was probably the one thing they were lacking was being like an elite defensive team. You know you're going to get buckets with Shaq in the paint, with Penny running the show, D. Scott on the wing, Nick Anderson on the wing, Horace Grant hitting the boards. You got a complete squad. Um, Again, you throw Budenholzer in that mix, get those guys focusing in on defense, playing both sides of the ball. Easily my pick. This guy, in fact, I think he's about to be a two-time coach of the year. There's not many of those. I think he's going to get coach of the year again. So we're going with Coach Bud. All right. That's round one. Round two. Ray, you up first. Danny, you follow. Name an NFL great player that's not a quarterback that was successful more so because of the system and or players around him not named Ray Lewis or Emma Smith. I'm going to ask one more time. Name an NFL great player that's not a quarterback that was successful more so because of the system and or players around him not named Ray Lewis or Emma Smith. Not a quarterback. Yep. And there it go right there. Just so you see it. Whoever playing along. I'm ready. All right. Let's go now. Look at the last 20 years in football. Obviously, the one team that comes to mind that's dominated, that's been in the mix every single year. You look at the New England Patriots, and one of the calling cards for the past was Belichick was never paying nobody no big money. He wasn't like it was a lot of guys that people thought, man, that guy's going to go ahead and get paid. And New England just let him walk, and then they bring in the next guy, plug and play. And you look at a guy that go. Wes Welker, when you start looking at his numbers, the guy might have a Hall of Fame career. There is nothing special about Wes Welker. Nothing at all. The best thing he had going for him was he played in New England and Tom Brady was his quarterback. Um, The guy, I I don't know how many Super Bowls he was there for. I want to say two, maybe three of them. Again, I don't know the exact number. Um, But he put together a hell of a career. He's not super fast. He's not big. He's He's an okay route runner. He don't have extremely great hands. He's just a regular runner to meal average wide receiver who was fortunate enough to play on some great teams with a great coach and a great quarterback and had a heck of a career and going to have a few Super Bowl rings and some great stories to tell his grandkids. So I'm going with Wes Welker being very fortunate with where he landed in his career. All right, Danny, it's on you. Let's go now. When you think of great players around the NFL, where it's not quarterbacks that were successful because of systems, for me, a guy that comes off as a guy that was not a system guy that was just great because he had great players around him, you look at a guy, I'm going to say one off the top of my head, you're looking at Steve Smith of the Carolina Panthers. Listen to this. It's not because of a system why Steve Smith was great. Did he have good players around him? He had Cam Newton around him. Cam Newton was an, 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 an MVP, all pro type of player. He played with guys that were that Wesley Walls, one of the most underrated tight ends in the NFL. When it comes to systems and great players, Steve Smith not only just created offense around him, he also played with little talent. He also played with good talent. He's got to the Super Bowl. He put numbers up on both sides of the board. And for me, the greatness is because of the players around him. He elevated players around him. He got Musim Muhammad a big contract. If it wasn't for him, the other receivers around him, like Ted Ginn, they wouldn't have gotten the Super Bowl because of Steve Smith. Because Steve Smith was just that type of player. So for me, a player that was great because of more so the system, because Carolina built their offense around Steve Smith. Cam Newton was the most accurate quarterback in the league. But what happened? They gave the ball to Steve Smith, and Steve Smith made plays. So for me, Steve Smith's my guy for this one. Oof. All right. That's round two. Yo, this is close, man. Um, I don't know. I think this last question is going to um, be the one to decide it, for real. You know, sometimes I'll be saying it just to say it, but this is for real. <laughs> I'm for real on this one. All right, Danny, you up first. Ray, you follow. 
Okay. So here's a question. Name the athlete who has or will be affected by this COVID-19 situation the most. Not name LeBron James or Tom Brady. Max that question one more time. Name the athlete who has or will be affected by this COVID-19 situation the most. Not name LeBron James or Tom Brady. Danny, you have 30 seconds to come up with your answer. You have 10 seconds. Now people can't say, oh, they looking at nothing like that. Y'all see their eyes right now? Y'all see what's going on. All right, Danny. Let's go now. So when you look at athletes that are affected by COVID-19, there are plenty of sports to go around. There are plenty of athletes that play all these different sports. But to me, the athlete that's going to be affected the most by all of this is a sport is an athlete that most people aren't really going to consider an athlete because they play a sport that no one really talks about. And that's Simone Biles, the gymnast. And I'll say why it's affecting her because number one, she had a chance to go to the Olympics this year and completely not dominate, but do what she does best again in a sport that only has a short shelf life. You only have a certain number of Olympics you can go to. Now with the Tokyo Olympics now postponed for a potential another year or two, she now enters her mid twenties, a woman who had a chance to not only dominate and get three to four more gold medals in Tokyo this year might be prevented from getting another opportunity to win more gold medals and distance herself, not only as the best female gymnast in the history of the sport, but arguably the most dominant female in any sport and also the most dominant athlete in any sport of all time. Think about this. If she wins four more gold medals, that puts her at, what, 31 gold medals in every single gymnast competition that you're going to find. No other woman has even come close to that. Now, because I think she'll be 23, 24 by the time the Olympics happen, even next year, if it gets delayed even further, because guess what? Tokyo does not even know how to handle COVID. So with the potential Olympics being delayed even further, Simone Biles won't have another opportunity potentially to win three to four more gold medals. So the athlete that's affected by this the most, on top of the fact of how much money she's going to lose and also the endorsements and everything else, I'm taking Simone Biles because arguably she's dominant now, but we don't know if we're ever going to see her at this level ever again. All right, Ray, it's on you. Let's go now. Oh my God, I have to blow my first 30 seconds. I hardly rebuttal, but I have to. Did we really say that the offense was built around Steve Smith, but he was successful because of other players? If anything, they were successful because of him. He spent most of his prime with Jake DeLome, not Cam Newton, Jake DeLome. And that, oh man, we're just going to leave that alone. The offense was built around Steve Smith. Those guys were even remotely successful because of him, not the other way around. We're going to move ahead to my answer on the last question. I'm going to stick with the NBA and go James Harden. James Harden is going to get the LeBron James treatment. No matter what happens with his COVID, he's going to get the negative aspect from the people that dislike him and or his game. He's on the wrong side of 30. In his prime, he's now been looked at a guy that has great regular seasons and can't get it done in the postseason, i.e. the Peyton Manning effect, right? Oh, he gets to the postseason and he nuts up. That's what people – I don't know if I can say that on here. Um and they say he doesn't get it done, right? So now they bring in Russell Westbrook. He don't have an excuse as not having a legit number two anymore. He got another guy who's won an MVP in the last couple of seasons. And those guys were just starting to click before the COVID. So now, if he does somehow pull off winning the championship, people are going to put an asterisk on this championship. He's not going to be able to win for losing. And if he doesn't pull it off, people will say, even with all the time off, all the time to do X, Y, and Z. He had everything going in his favor and he still didn't get it done. No matter what he does, the people that look at him in a negative light will continue to do that. So with this COVID, he didn't have an opportunity to go out and try and get it done with another superstar alongside him, which he really didn't have before. Chris Paul wasn't a superstar. Dwight Howard was on the downside of his career. He now has a legit superstar running with him. And if they were to win, people would put an asterisk. If he doesn't, they'll chalk it up as another season. He didn't get it done. James Harden can't win with this. That is it. Yo, this is a great, great battle, man. Y'all brought it.
Have a sports injury? Need to see an orthopedic doctor? Ortho Atlanta is one of Metro Atlanta's largest orthopedic and sports medicine practices, providing orthopedic and sports medicine care for the whole family. With 37 physicians and 14 offices, the practice provides the highest level of care for injury of muscles, joints, bones, and spine. Ortho Atlanta offers convenient access to a full range of musculoskeletal surgeons and specialists. Ortho Atlanta also offers on-site physical therapy, pain management care, MRI imaging, and workers' compensation care. The Ortho Atlanta Surgery Centers in Austell and Fayetteville provide cost-effective, same-day surgical procedures in an accredited outpatient center. Hip, knee, shoulder, back pain? Ortho Atlanta has you covered with specialists in all areas. Same-day appointments, orthopedic care for the whole family. Ortho Atlanta, Atlanta's choice for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Learn more at www.orthoatlanta.com. Yo, this is Champ Bailey, 2019 Pro Football Hall of Famer. I just want to give a shout out to my boy, the Three Point Conversion Radio. It is. All right, we are back inside a three-point conversion sports lounge. And that was a great battle, man. Um, yeah, I need y'all votes. I need y'all votes. Um, that's how we do it. When it's time to go in, good stuff. That's what it is. But we have some good stuff right now to talk about. Man, we have a special guest on here. Have an NFL Hall of Famer. Of course, somebody I've looked up to. We um, probably all looked up to. One of the greatest quarterbacks to ever do it. Mr. Warren Moon. How's it going today, sir? I am doing all right this morning. How you doing? I I just want to, first of all... uh Send out all my thoughts and prayers to C.T. Vernon, a, a great uh, civil rights leader, and also uh, Reverend John Lewis, uh, who both passed away yesterday. Uh, both did a great, great job of of uh, trying to advance our company through civil rights, through the civil rights movement, and, and John, of course, uh, continuing to uh, give his service to the United States Congress for over thirty years, and uh, lost his battle with cancer yesterday. So, just wanted to. Give a shout out to them and their families, and know that we're all thinking about them. Definitely, no, definitely agree with you on that. So, man, the NFL right now, especially with the pandemic going on, um, we're based on the brink of the NFL going into a training camp starting. They came out with the Oakley mouth shield to attach on the helmets to prevent and spread coronavirus do you feel like there can be a season with the pandemic especially the fact that it's not really slowing down right now you know it's it's really hard to to say so um again i would leave all of that to the medical experts because uh, they know much more about um the spread of this disease they know more about the uh, you know what's going to take to uh to get the disease, as far as uh, being involved in a, in a in a in a sport where there's contact involved like that all the time, uh, I'm just not really sure, you know, how that's going to work out. But I'm sure if there's the answers and, and good answers for it, and if there's precautions that you can take to uh, make sure the players are safe, the medical people are going to know more about it than anybody else. So hopefully, they're going by their guidance. And uh, hopefully that's the way it's going to be steered. And if there is a season, that would be great because I'd love to see professional football or college football. But if it's not, then it won't be the end of the world. Uh, I know it'll be a very difficult time for for everybody from an entertainment side and also from a financial side. But um, the main thing is we want to you know continue to keep lives living, and we don't want to lose any more lives than we've already lost. 
Right. Can I? Ask, um, I have another question. Would, would you, would you be comfortable being in this position, or with like you said? Because I understand with the medical, um, knowing if they're saying okay, it's okay. So if they if they do get the okay, and you were in this position, would you feel comfortable then, or would it still be kind of like I don't know in the back of your head? You know, I think it would still be you know some. Some uncomfortableness, there's no question about it, and I'd probably still continue to try and do as much research as I possibly could on my own. Mm-hmm. But you want to hope that, uh, that the medical professionals and also your Players Association are going to put you in the, in the best possible um, situation to, to be successful. That doesn't mean that, it, that anything is 100% um, uh, disease or, or virus-proof. I mean, we've already seen that with basketball. You know, guys have tested positive since they've been in their bubble. Same thing with baseball. So we know guys are going to get sick um, along the way because people are going to slip up and do the wrong thing. But uh, for the most part, hopefully, if everybody's taking care of their responsibilities and doing the things they're supposed to do to keep us safe, uh, it should go relatively well. And once again, we're here with Mr. Warren Moon. And, of course, the segment is brought to you by Perry Trademark Law. To get a trademark or anything patent, call 844-PERRY-MT. Again, that's 844-737-7868. Now, Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys weren't able to come to a deal before the deadline. Do you believe that Dak is worth what he's been asking for? You know, if if I was in the negotiating room and knew exactly what he was asking for, I could tell you that. I I really don't know. Everybody has their assumptions of what uh, what Dak is asking, what's been offered to him, uh, how many years it's been, and all that. Uh, I think that's what it really came down to, from what I understand, is that Dak wanted a shorter-term deal, where the, the Cowboys wanted a little bit longer-term deal so they could stretch out his money and, and make it more salary cap-friendly. So I think that's where the big big problem was, as far as the, the amount of money that he was being offered. I think uh was a fair amount of money, there's no question about it. And I, I even heard at the last minute that uh, there was an offer there that he probably would have taken, but they didn't have enough time to get it done before the deadline. So... Uh, it's too bad it didn't work out, but um, you know you're, you're playing for thirty <laughs> thirty one point four million dollars this year, which is a lot of money. The only the only um, the only problem is if you get hurt or something like that. Uh, now the, the future is in, in jeopardy, so that's why you want those longer term deals, so you get a little bit more money up front to uh, to uh, have guarantees against getting injured or something like that, but. Dak's betting against himself that he's not going to get hurt. He hasn't been hurt since he's been in the league so far. So hopefully it doesn't happen this year and he'll put himself in a better position to negotiate next year. Now, with that being said, do you think that he is going to have more leverage next year when it comes back to the negotiating table? Well, it all depends on how he plays. You know, if he plays really well and the team does really well, that's going to help his negotiating power. If if, if for some reason he has, a, you know, a, uh, a subpar season, or for some reason he um, gets hurt or something like that, that's going to hurt his negotiating. So we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. But uh, for right now, we know what he's going to get paid this year, and and uh, hopefully he does have a great year so he puts himself back in a, in a really good position to, to make a ton of money because it's out there. Yeah, because even the tag next year would be like 50 mil. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> yes. Now, well, I think it goes up to thirty-seven, but okay. and he could so in a two-year period he can make you know something like sixty-eight million dollars um, of guaranteed money. But you, you don't want to keep playing on those one-term, one-year right. deals if you don't if you don't have to because again, you know, injury can happen at any time, and, and we've seen it happen with a lot of different guys. So you want to make sure that you get that long-term security, and that's what you know Patrick Mahomes got with with the deal that he has. Maybe he took a little less money, but I tell you what, a half billion dollars uh, is pretty good to work with. <laughs> now, with Cam Newton, the fact that he's a New England Patriot and seems to be rejuvenated again, although the Patriots aren't as talented on the offensive side, can you see the Patriots being successful with Cam at the helm? Yeah, it depends on what they're um, willing to do with their offense, and I, and I think they are willing to make some changes. They, they weren't able to do a lot of things creatively with Tom Brady because he just wasn't the athlete and just couldn't do some of the things that a lot of these other quarterbacks, younger quarterbacks, African-American quarterbacks can do in the game. So I think Josh McDaniels, 
their offensive coordinator has probably been biting at the bit to to have somebody that he can you know do some different things offensively with and be more creative. And, and Cam gives them that ability to do that. And, and you got to remember, when Cam was in Carolina, he didn't have the greatest talent there either. Right. Uh, he didn't have he didn't have any elite receivers uh, on the outside. Uh, I think he had Greg Olson as his tight end, who was a good player. And uh, so Cam did a lot of that on his own offensively. And, and I think he's capable of doing that again up in, in New England. And I think they probably have, you know, a really good running back stable there right now. And, and they've got a couple of young receivers who have a chance to be good. So. I think he might have better talent up in in New England to work with uh, starting out. Right. And then with Josh McDaniels, knowing that, um, you know, we give him a lot of credit for what he did in New England with the talent he had. But now, like you just stated, he has a <laughs> – Look what he did with Tebow. Right. You have a – right. And he has a <laughs> great talent with uh, Cam being able to move him around. I feel like we will see – we will be able to see – what Josh McDaniels can do. Yeah, this is more on him versus what – because we know what Cam, Cam won the MVP. Yeah, we just have to make sure Cam's healthy. And, and uh, you know, he won the MVP five years ago. So you know, there's been a lot of wear and tear on his body since then. But he seems to be in great shape from what he, he shows on his uh, his Instagram and all of that. He's, uh, his body seems to be in shape. But, but uh, the wear and tear of football uh, can take its toll on you. So – Again, we'll just have to wait and see where he is um, with all of his different injuries. Um, and I think they'll be able to put the type of offense in. You, know, you remember when Jacoby Brissett was there, mm-hmm. and he and he started, uh, I think, a couple of games, and, and they did some different things with him to take advantage of his mobility as well. So I think Josh McDaniels understands how to make those things happen. He just was handcuffed because of Tom Brady not being able to do those type of things. Absolutely. Now, Pat Mahone, boy, just signed a mega deal that can be worth over $500 million over the next 12 years. First, what was your thoughts when you first heard the news? And although he's only played two years, do you think he is probably the best quarterback in the NFL right now? Well, he's right up there if he's not. Uh, He's definitely as talented as anybody in the league. Uh, I think there are other guys who have more, uh, more on their resume, and that's only because they've been in the league longer. But, I think the, the Kansas City Chiefs are paying him mainly because of what he's done already, which is you know win a Super Bowl and also be an MVP in the league, and then what they think he can do going forward. And uh, I think Patrick was was conscious that um, I want this contract to be a long term deal where it can be spread out a lot more, and we can continue to keep creating uh, opportunities to get better players on our team, so we can continue to be good. And I thought that was very smart. Mm-hmm. But it also gives him the security and and uh, gives him a lot of money uh, to to go through the rest of his career. And I'm sure uh, if things change very much, um, you know, with the way money is 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 uh, generated in the NFL, because the revenue just keeps growing and growing and growing. I'm sure the the Chiefs would bring him back in if his if his contract isn't in line with the way things are going, and if he's playing at a high level still. Um, they'll redo that deal. So I don't think he's handcuffed by this deal, but I think it does give him the security that he needs, especially if something happens, if he gets hurt, God forbid. You know, there's $140 million uh, guaranteed right. in there just for injury. Right. I thought that was smart. I, I think the fact that now you see a lot of teams adding that. Um, I forgot who the other player was that had it in his um, contract, the um, – the injury policy, injury yeah. policy. I, I think that is great. I think that was what one forty. Yeah, it was, that's what. Yeah, yes. one forty. So, did they have that injury policy when you were playing? Yeah, we had injury guarantees. Uh, they just go through a uh, insurance company and get it insured that way. But the the, the injuries, uh, the guarantees were one hundred forty million dollars. <laughs> I, I guarantee you that. I said, was it through Geico? Like what? <laughs> Probably more like forty million dollars. <laughs> not, not no forty, one hundred and forty million. But that's interesting because I didn't, you know, until now we didn't know that it was guarantees for injuries, and that was the thing we will always talk about. I think a lot of it was we thought that the player themselves got their own injury right, insurance right. or something like that. Well, right. some some players would buy their own, but uh, if you're good enough you know, to get it negotiated into the deal and have the team pay for it, uh, that's that's how you go about doing it. And most players try to get that done, and not so much every player on the roster, but definitely your higher profile players who are, are going to make a ton of money. Uh, I think it's to the to the 
to the organization's advantage too to to um, to make take that insurance out because it, it saves them some money if they end, end up having to pay you pay a player a big salary if he gets hurt say at the beginning of the year or something. Right, and before we let you go, I definitely have to ask you this: We're talking about quarterbacks, so it's appropriate, I guess. Was there a quarterback that you loved playing against? Like because of the battles, like you knew, okay, I'm going against this guy, this guy. Even though, of course, you're not playing against each other, but that was the quarterback on that side. Did you have that rivalry or quarterback that you loved to go up against? You know, I, I definitely love playing against the guys in my division because of those are the guys you went against twice every year, and you had to you had to beat those guys in order to win your division. That's always your goal. One of your goals at the beginning was to win your division so you can get in the playoffs. So you know, going against Boomer Esiason a couple of times a year, going against Bernie Kosar a couple of times a year, uh, those are guys that I always remember. Uh, you know, having really good battles with against the the, the Bengals and and also the, the Cleveland Browns during that time, and then. I love to play against Dan Marino because he was one of the, the top, if not the top, quarterback during the time that I was playing him and John Elway. So I just knew when I played against those guys, even though I wasn't on the field at the same time, you just knew consciously that I got to put points on the board because these guys are probably going to put points on the board as well. So I got to make sure that that uh, I'm keeping up with them, if not um, scoring more points than them, to, to to put the pressure on them to make to have to score points against our defense. So. Those guys were, were guys I loved to compete against because they were great players, they were great competitors, and they were at the top uh, of the game during that time. Now, this is kind of off topic. I know you mentioned uh, John Elway, and I know he kind of forced his way to Denver, and you kind of had to go the route that you had to go. Like, I don't want to say did it make you feel some type of way, but like, did, did it make you feel some type of way that you had to go the route that you had to go and John Elway kind of did what he had to do and – kind of forcing his way to Denver, kind of? Yeah, I, th- I think everybody's situation is different. I would have much loved to have John Elway's uh, situation more than mine because he was the number one overall pick in the draft, and it was just a matter of he didn't want to go to, to Baltimore. He wanted to go somewhere else, and uh, he, he ended up getting it worked out where he could get traded to uh, to the Denver Broncos, and the rest is history. But uh, I definitely wasn't happy about the situation that I had to go through going to Canada to play, and and try to earn, you know earn my way into the league, but um, I have no regrets about it as I look back at my career now because I had a great time up there. I you know won a lot of football games, we won championships. Uh, those are memories that I'll have the rest of my life. And then uh, I also got a chance to live my dream and play 17 years in the NFL. So I don't have any regrets about it. But at the time, there's no question I would have rather come into the league right out of college like every other. Um, uh, college player does to go into the draft and get drafted and all those things that go along with it. Uh, yes, sir. That's crazy that you played 17 years after, after playing like, play, like 15 years. Right. Yeah, that's like, man, that was good all of those uh, years. Imagine like, the numbers. Just imagine oh the numbers. Oh, my God. Oh, man, that, that's, that's still crazy to think about that. But yeah, I, some, some people might say I'm crazy for doing that. <laughs> no, nah, man, you you were successful all those years, though. Like I, I just remember being young when you went to Seattle. The, I remember him killing the Bears when he played. Right. Bears, so. Wait, when he went to Seattle, I was just like, my father, like, he's still playing. Like, <laughs> how's he doing this? My father was like, I don't know. <laughs> Hey, the, the ever ready battery just kept going. As, as, as long as the battery's going, I'm gonna keep I'm going. going. Have any? I wonder if any players came to you. Was, were you taking anything or drinking anything? Like, <laughs> what do I need I know, to do? No, I really took good care of myself, though. But I, I'll tell you how old I was when I played. I, I played against Ron Springs. Have you ever heard of him? He's running back for the uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, back when Tony Dorsett, it, it, he was a fullback. Tony Dorsett was a halfback. And I played against yes, him. And then when I went to Seattle, I was teammates Sean with his son, Sean Spring. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that that shows you how long I played the game. Oh, man. That's a career. That's a career right there. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, that's, that's something. That's, I don't think people give enough credit to that right there. Wow. At the quarterback position where you're taking hits. So, wow. But uh, we definitely appreciate you for coming on. And, of course, you're always welcome to come back. You have a great, safe, and healthy weekend, sir. You guys do the same. And thanks for having me on, and thanks for keep getting the word out the way you do. You guys do a great job of uh, staying up with things that are progressive and what's going on in our society. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you.
All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with the Stop It segment. Keep it locked. to y'all what's so dope about the three-point conversion first of all everybody is a fan of the game first second of all everybody is a student of the game second and third of all we're the average sports fan just like everybody else we're not coming in here walking with our nose tipped high acting snooty acting brand new this is a grassroots organization bar none the three-point conversion where fans' opinions matter. Be sure to visit the website wwwthe number 3 pointconversioncom Get your fix, get your articles, multimedia, and everything else that you as a sports fan need. So again, the three point conversion.com. Fans opinions matter. No mercy, don't let up on him. Go hard on him, Mr. Controversy. Hit him with the stop it button. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And we like to thank everyone who is listening and who is all watching. Yes, yes. And um, supporting us, and we appreciate you. And then we ask you to continue to support the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. But not only that, but the Three Point Conversion Sports Media Group in itself. And right now, yeah, that was. Right now, it is time for the most infamous, the most famous Stop It segment. Let's get it. Stop 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 it. Yes. S-T-O-P, new word, I-T. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. All right, D, it's on you. Yes, 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 yes. Um... Bro, you say I don't all even, of that, and then you say... I, I don't, oh, I don't even know how to say his last name. Okay. That's why I was slowing down. You know the first name? Yeah, Cal Quiero. Oh, okay. Is that, is that it, G? Oh, you're talking about the, 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 the yeah. safety yeah. or something like that? Yeah. I know. Uh, okay. Yeah. I already know where you're going. Yeah. Come on down. He getting to stop it for saying Jill Scott is not attractive. Oh, my God. Stop. Yes. <laughs> I gave him one. I, I, I posted and commented on it. Like, dude, like, wait, what? Tripping. And then he got dragged, and then he like, "Hey, that's not what I meant." No, dude, like, nah, dude, bro, you can't dude, say dude, nothing, dude, anything dude, like that, dude. Yeah, bugging, dude. He yeah. must not see what she did to that microphone. Uh, <laughs> like, like, dude. this is a family show. <laughs> right. you, I, I didn't say anything. I just said it's a family <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he getting that stop it, man. You can hold that. You go. You gonna have to hold that for the whole season. Stop it. He's going to get clowned in the locker room, all of that. All right. I got two. <laughs> one is petty. <laughs> what? Uh, the first one goes to um, God, Rudy Go- Gobert. <laughs> you know, he came out and was saying how the. Um, he can't say the, nothing. The, the, the um, <laughs> snitch line, you know, the, said it was petty. Bro, you was the one that started all this. You kicked it off, fam. Like, like, bro, come on, man. Can I get that stop it, G? Stop Stop it. it. All right. Now, this this goes to... So, first, it's a lot of stuff going on with the, you know, Nick Cannon. We're not going to get into that. Deshaun Jackson, he said what he said. 
but I'm giving my stop it to, I hate to do it, but this is my guy, but Steven Jackson, Jazz Guard, Utah Jazz Guard, Justin Wright Foreman, and Dwayne Wade for all commenting, comments, and then pull it back and say, oh, my bad, I apologize. What? No, I didn't, I wasn't really saying what he was saying. What I was saying was that I, I'm with him, like, if you didn't read it, you shouldn't have commented, dog. <laughs> like, first of all, and then we we all know it's about that money when it comes. That's how you know, like you stated earlier, it's about that money. So for all them players comment and then retract it, especially when Deshaun and um, and Nick apologize themselves. So, man, they get to stop it for that. Stop, stop it. it. Right, let me throw this quick one in. I wasn't meant to do last week. It was mm-hmm. a stop it for the NBA for coming up with them statements uh, for what can be on somebody's back. And not giving any of the players any type of input. Like, I think they need to stop it for that. Stop it. And I meant to say that last week, but but I forgot. But the players get to stop it, too, because if that's the case, y'all shouldn't agree agree to that. Because you're right. I don't know if they agreed to it, because once they came out, the players was like, no, they agreed. The NF, the NBA, PA, and the players had agreed to it. See, that's petty. Yeah. Right. All of them get to stop the whole thing. All right. I mean, I, I'm with the NBA trying to help them, but still, that's allow, the, have, allow them to say what they want. Like, right. so, for, for, and what I mean by it is my fault, G, in doing this. But let's say LeBron wants to do Tamir Rice. What if he went to the family and asked the family, "Hey, you know, I want to wear Tamir's name on my back. Is that okay?" Like, allow them to do that. But you the, know what I'm saying? But the players Agreed. voted. That's what yeah, I said. That's, yeah, that was the players. Go ahead, G. All right. Uh, well, first, um, I don't. I, I had to look up Kyle Carroll and see what what, <laughs> what school he went to. <laughs> Uh, you went to Northwestern. Uh, oh, y'all might be more familiar oh, with Evanston oh, than I am. But the first thing I thought of after what he said about Joe Scott was like, he's been dating blondes all his life. He has. So right. he, he don't know. He went right. to North- anyway. uh, I mean, not to say that, but if he went to Northwestern, he yeah. probably did. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> uh, my stop it goes to Alex Rodriguez. I know him and J-Lo and some friends are trying to buy the Mets. Um. <laughs> Uh, okay, you wanted, we've been hearing about you buying the Mets for like a year, but that's not where you get to stop it. So he was on a conference call, and he said that the key for baseball going to the next level is that the owners and players have to work together to raise revenues that they would split evenly. That would mean that baseball would have a salary cap, which they famously do not as far as uh, player salaries go. Uh Alex Rodriguez has made almost half a billion dollars in his career, and he was able to get these gigantic contracts because there is no No salary salary cap in baseball. And uh, so what he was suggesting means there would have to be a salary cap. So players came out like, like, you know, because he because he's becoming an owner. Like, yeah. So. So. And then he walked back and walked back and said, like, I never said salary cap. But what you suggested means there has to be a salary salary cap cap. because you're going to be an owner. Like right. you, you, you're not even paying attention to what you're saying. Right. So you get to stop it. Yeah. Stop yeah, it. I was, I was looking at that earlier um, um, this week. Like because you finna be an owner because like, you're in the process of becoming an owner. Not just that, but like that part, <laughs> and then the other part. Like you said, you made you half made, a billion yeah, dollars, and, and now, now you, you wanna, want people yeah, not to make a half a billion dollars. Tripping, man. The only reason you can buy the Mets now is because it wasn't no salary cap. Right. Uh-huh. But because you about to buy the Mets, you want a salary cap. Right. All right. That wraps up. The Stop It segment. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Have you been looking for a radio station that gives you sports? I don't believe it. Oh, it's a touchdown. Entertainment. Are you not entertained? And other special interest talk shows. Well, isn't that special? All on one app. Yo, that's dope. What app is that? It's the real 1100 AM app for WWE. Grab it for free in your Google Play or Apple App Store today. Yes, yes, y'all hear this music? You already know what it means. It means it is time to let you go. But before we let you go, we have a couple of shout outs. Stay tuned because you might be a part of it. First off, I want to give a shout out to the Almighty God for giving me this platform to do what I do, say what I say, make you all happy, upset, mad, want to give me the stop it button. I appreciate this God and um, love that we are evolving in it. Man, this is just crazy. Also, I'd like to thank um, our sponsors, 
Perry Trademark Law and Ortho Atlanta. And also, I want to thank our guest, Mr. Warren Moon. I want to thank Danny Thompson and Ray J. Land for um, participating in the Battlegrounds Championship. Please, I need your votes if y'all was listening. I got to go back through, but I, I need your votes. Also, I want to thank uh, the man behind the glass, G. I want to thank my partner in crime, D Intellectual. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I just want to thank everybody for always listening, tuning in with us, even during this pandemic. Y'all have been paying attention to us, um, listening to our listen to us every Saturday and also viewing us and uh, on Facebook, Instagram, wherever we go. We definitely appreciate it. And um, like I always say, every week we're going to pull it through. We're going to continuously be resilient and make it through everything that we need to make it through. All right. I want to thank my beautiful family, my lovely, gorgeous wife, my beautiful children, my cousins. My niece will stand with us. What's up, Niall? Uh, but my niece, my nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, auntie, uncles, grandparents, cousins, play cousins. Hey, man, let people know that you love them while you're still alive. Let them know that you love them, love on them. Eat good, be safe, be healthy. Stay focused. Uh, go ahead and arrest those murderers who murdered Breonna Taylor. And um, y'all have a safe weekend, man. Great weekend. Until then, same time next week. Same show, same crazy host, same sports nonsense. Will you miss me? I'm out. Peace. Arrest Brianna Taylor's murderers. What'd I say? <laughs> no, no, you said it. I'm just saying it again. Oh, arrest <laughs> Brianna Taylor's murder. I thought I messed up. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. let's arrest, arrest those them. murderers. You just got done listening to the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook accounts at The Three Point Conversion. And also make sure you check out our website, the threepointconversion.com. Be sure to follow us live and listen every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn today.